The Domination DLC for Europa Universalis 4 has brought a ton of flavor, a lot of new formable nations, and a revamp of multiple mechanics in the base game. One of these things is the way that you can play England. There's two ways, you can stay the good old fashioned Great Britain way and go colonial, or you can form the Angevin Empire, which is what we're gonna be doing today. If you don't know what the Angevin Empire is, it's basically what you get when you mix France and England, which is actually kind of historically accurate considering that a lot of the English kings uh, didn't even speak English, they predominantly spoke French. I'm looking at you, Richard Lionheart. That's right, you guys know Richard Lionheart, the most famous English king, barely spoke any English and only stayed in England for like six months. The rest of his life he spent in the Angevin parts of uh, France in Aquitaine. If we get 6,000 likes on the first week of this video, I will be doing a second part where we're gonna turn not just Western Europe into Angevin, but all of Europe into Angevin Europe, <laughs> making full use of that juicy mission tree that we get. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 170,000 subs. Also, guys, if you ever want to buy any Paradox games, consider using my link in description to my Nexus. You can get the Domination DLC as well as the Domination pre-order bonus if you use my link. Plus, there's Hoi 4, Stellaris, City Skylines, Viki 3, absolutely everything you'd ever want to buy from them on my Nexus. It would really support the channel a lot. There's a few things that have changed compared to the previous version of England with the newest one. The main thing is the fact that we will be going for the personal union with the French from the very get-go. The moment that we get the event for the uh, province of Maine, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna PU France. This allows us to decide between keeping the British missions or going for the Angevin missions. Right now, these are the uh, British missions that we have here. As you can see, they're predominantly focused on a colonial game as well as a little bit of, say, playing toll game or economic game more than anything else and that's not what we're going for that being said let's do our estates first we have the english villainage where we get a little bit of a tax debuff based on the amount of land ownership that the nobility have however in order to revoke this we need to either have 40 percent land owned by the crown or 30 percent as long as we have each of the plus one mana privilege given out to the estates there is a way of getting rid of this privilege from the very get-go it does require Require a few restarts, but it's worth it in my opinion. What I'm talking about is the uh, Parliament. You can get 5% Crownland ownership from the Parliament. It does require a lot of luck. Placate Nobility, Grant Autonomy, sure, more autonomy. There you go. So now we got 35% Crownlands. We can get another 5%, summon the Diet, seize the Crownlands, and there you go, boys. We just got rid of the privilege. I didn't even unpause and I got rid of the privilege that I've seen other people struggle in their particular run for decades not giving out names but i've seen them struggle for decades sometimes you just got to use the big brain okay that's what happens here boys now let's go ahead and um what is this kersey subject of england isn't that um yeah that's french lands we're gonna get that because we're gonna be getting this anyway after they become our pu right now that we've done that we can give out the plus one mana privilege there you go one two and a three and we start with 10 percent crownlands so it's really not that bad <laughs> if you haven't watched my estates video i highly recommend you do watch it i explain a lot more in debt what you're supposed to be doing with your estates. I'll make it very short here. You already saw the plus one mana. We're giving out the religious diplomats also. Increase levies for our extra manpower. Patronage of the arts for the extra prestige. As well as, of course, the holy trinity of the newly added privileges for all three of the estates. Sport position, economic freedom, and clerical education. One more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give out the monopoly on wool and monopoly on wine. For two reasons, we're not gonna get any wool or wine provinces in the next 10 years and this way we get some money up front we get some uh, loyalty from these two privileges e equilibrium that is and we also get some mercantilism from these privileges as well and because we're not expanding and not getting any of those particular goods in the next 10 years it's basically just free upfront money we are losing two years worth of money but it's worth it considering you get the mercantilism and you can use this early on to help propagate your wars and so on plus as the english mercantilism is insanely overpowered and you really want to get as much of that as possible also giving out the supremacy over the crown for the uh, extra loyalty equilibrium. I'm not giving any more monopolies for these two guys because I'm going to need the extra slots. I'm going to need the slots for uh, strong duchies and so on once I get the uh, extra vassals. 
subjects and I'm gonna need the burger loans and all that schnapps as well from the uh, burgers afterwards because the event might trigger super fast we will be switching over and we're gonna be bringing all of our units to the uh, French mainland it's gonna be a pretty pitched out battle the French will outnumber us so we're gonna have to use mercenaries to win this war we don't have any starting professionalism so it's actually a okay using those mercs I'm gonna be hiring the free company in uh, Cotentin whilst I wait for my troopers to get there as well and let's go ahead and uh, get some alliances let's check who's gonna want to be our friendos Austria and Castile apparently want to be our friendos that is really good news especially Castile I would love to get a royal marriage and I will get a royal marriage with them maybe just so maybe we can get a trust tomorrow which in turn means we might get a union with them same goes for the Austrians I wouldn't mind uh, a Habsburg or a trust tomorrow either one is good to be fair let's go ahead and make the French our rivals also followed by the Danes our rivals not bad because we will be getting uh, some lands from the Danes either from the event from Norway or if the event doesn't trigger which well technically it should trigger in the newest update mandatory for it to trigger but if it doesn't we're gonna attack them so there's that always got to have a backup plan right let's get our morale of armies advisor as well diplomatic uh, reputation this guy is 50 percent cheaper mr john fortescue and john Capgrave as well is 50 percent cheaper absolute chad lords is these guys are both gonna help us out so much with fixing our economy it's actually why i'm gonna make them level two advisors it's worth it two ducats for each of them but we uh get significantly more mana points and mana points is the main problem we have as the english at the start because we start with the zero 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 take note for the really early bit of the campaign aragon would be more than willing to help you out against the uh, french but if you do ally the aragonese it might happen that the castilians are going to decide to break their alliance with you so in my case i'm going to test it out but if the aragonese uh, are going to cancel the alliance then i'm going to cancel the alliance with the aragonese before the castilians cancel their alliance with me because i value castile way more than i do uh, aragon we also got the raisin army mission done meaning we can get a subjugation cb on the scots and permanent claims on all of the irish lands however i'm not gonna attack the scots just yet because i need to finish my war with the french first before i do anything else which is why i'm gonna wait out before i click on this particular mission also gonna be focusing on military points as well since uh we're gonna be uh needing that extra military in our campaigns okay looks like we got a horrible 151 air okay fair enough <laughs> that person's not gonna stick around for too long trust me on that considering that our combat width is 20 right now we want to have an army that has at least 20 units to fill up the entirety of the combat width but that being said we wanted to also have only four cavalry units so we're going to transfer one unit from here and we're going to reinforce the rest of that with uh infantry units so we can have 16 infantry and uh four cavalry for the main attacking force the rest of the boyos are going to stick behind just in case they are required to reinforce i've also deleted the fortification in calais it's not really of any use to me i'll keep the one in cayenne for now it might come of use as will the uh, one in the south in labord after the war with the french we'll delete the one in cayenne as well though minus two national unrest okay that's actually not bad let's get the uh burger loans now since we're gonna need them indebted to the burgers guild and all we gotta do now is just wait until the war triggers and we got the event here the surrender of maine we're not gonna give them uh, maine we're gonna go for the second option we're not gonna give an inch of territory and booyah Shinoki. that means the hundred years war just started they got scotland when did they ally scotland they just allied scotland what okay all right all right i may have made a mistake here i should have focused on scottish people first oh well, boys as they say in france do you want to live forever maggots might have been in starship troopers but i'm pretty sure that's what they say in france as well so to enforce the union with france we just need to get 60 percent war score which is not so bad there's going to be a little bit of a coalition but if you notice here if you pay close attention a lot of these are 50 and 51 meaning that if we enforce this on the last day of the year right before the um ae tick lowers then um it's gonna be significantly less nations in a coalition against us actually and because i actually forgot about the scottish completely i'm gonna need to uh bring my units over to the northern bits and take care of the scots first let's also make our leader actually a general he's not too bad overall we're gonna have only twenty thousand here for a little bit hopefully we peace out the scots quickly we just need to get a white piece with them nothing else so we're gonna siege down a few of their provinces we don't need to actually enforce anything on them we want that white piece so in five years later we can attack them to subjugate them the french likely will focus on the southern bits so we're gonna set up the defensive edict here as well we also gotta have a uh, very big uh, prey g sort of situation and a lot of alte force might be involved in this run i'm coming clean here okay this is not my first run i've had a lot of test runs before this as well and i'm not sure if this is gonna be the last run whatever run you see on youtube is the last one but how many runs it took me to get there nobody knows boys no this is one of those secrets 
of life. You know what I'm saying? We should have a fairly easy time winning against um, the Scots. Okay, this is again a uh, brand new event that the English got from the very early part of the campaign. You get some splendor, unrest, army tradition, and so on. Pretty cool stuff. Jousting in England. And it's uh, a very flavorful event. I'm happy to see that they added unique joustings to different countries, of course. If we're lucky and we manage to kick these bad boys off badly, we might be able to do that white piece a lot faster than I was expecting. So let's see how quickly we can siege down a few of these provinces. We have to do a naval landing to bypass the fortification they have in Dumfries. We're going to do in uh, Aberdeen. Their army is uh, recovering its morale in Inverness, so we should have enough time to uh, catch up with them. What was I saying? We did manage to catch up with them and we crushed them once more. I believe... Uh, this is gonna be the last uh, province I need to take from the Scots. Let's check. Well, I was wrong. It's 52-52, so we need to start sieging another province down as well. Let's go with the Inverness. Okay, one month later, and actually that was enough. Let's go ahead. White Pecius. Nice. Now let's bring our boys to Cumbria, because uh, we're gonna need to uh, bring all of these troopers over to the uh, French mainland. One production in Kent? Sure, we can get that. The best way to deal with the French is basically wipe out their armies whenever you see them separate and small Push in all of your units if you need to, but wipe out the small stacks. Eventually, it's going to hurt them so much. They will not be able to keep on recruiting infinite amount of units. They also have a manpower pool, right? So it's basically a case of divide and conquer in this initial first French war. Point in case, there we go. We wiped out another 6,000 troopers. We're going to do the same with these bad boys if we catch them in Paris. Otherwise, we're going to go around, try and wait for Auvergne and Lower Lyons to split up, and then we attack them one by one again, and then focus on the French troops as well. We can also click the 100 years war mission now and it's gonna allow us to choose between keeping the British missions and getting uh, some dev cost reduction and unrest for a few years or changing over to the uh, Angevin missions which focus on domination of Europe. That's why if we get the light gold for the second part we will dominate the rest of Europe not just Western Europe. I'm actually really excited for that because I've had a lot of fun playing as England so far. Of course we're gonna go for the Angevin missions. This changes a lot of stuff here. Once we get the French as our union we're gonna get a lot of mana points for our king. Eventually, once we reach the Angevin Kingdom mission here, we get until the end of the game dev cost reduction on Anjou and a few other modifiers, as well as we get the Act of Union Parliament issue and a lot of permanent claims. Essentially, the Act of Union allows us to change the country to the Angevin country, plus it inherits France instantly. So we don't need to waste 50 years waiting before we can inherit France or integrate France. We do it instantly. It is so freaking overpowered, that mission or Parliament Act, whatever you want to call it. And if we scroll down, you can see a lot of the other missions have been changed here as well. There's no more New World mission expansion. It's mostly just uh, focusing on Europe, basically. A new champion of the Joust, you say? Alright, I don't mind wasting 25 prestige for that bad boy. Let's see. We got Arthur Hood. Oh, come on. Really? Two fire, two shock, and six maneuver. What? How's that a hundred army tradition general, dude? It's not even 40 army tradition general. One thing I'm doing is uh, by moving my units between the north and the south bit a little bit a little bit that that's just rhyme right there I'm, I'm clearly the eminem of the middle ages here now my point is that it's uh fooling the ai into canceling its siege over here so this was at 21 percent it went back to minus 42 percent and this way i prevent the ai from basically getting any of my provinces siege down making it so much easier for me to just wipe them out whenever i need to and whenever i get the chance to of course there you go another one bites the dust and another one's gonna bite the dust in a few moments in valois this is by far the most successful way of dealing with the French because if you're just going to be fighting them one-on-one -on -one, they will win because they have way more troops than you this way attacking separate units not only does it give us a lot of war score because of look we basically won every single engagement and gain war score from that but we weaken them significantly but whenever they become our union afterwards it's easier to keep them in check as well and the best part is that uh, the French now only have <laughs> 15 17 thousand units we've brought them down to our freaking love look how many stacks we've actually wiped out already this is just ridiculous. I love this. The, the thing is, this is something you couldn't do in a multiplayer because, you know, humans know what's up and they wouldn't fall to these kind of tricks easily. But the AI is so easy to trick sometimes. Baiting them left and right with units and then intercepting and wiping out their entire armies is just really enjoyable. One thing I do recommend you keep an eye out is the fact that they'll continuously recruit 1,000 units all around the place. So you got to make sure you stack wipe these units before they manage to merge with the rest of the armies and form bigger blobs. Argo, 
so making it a lot harder for you to you know having to fight big blobs again also i have to mention that i noticed in 1.35 it's a lot easier getting stack wipes as long as you have the full combat with when you engage enemy armies so take full advantage of it we can now disinherit this bad boy because we want to have the war of the roses trigger so we can go through that series of events we pretty much have the war score to enforce the union on the french we just need 60 percent and we uh, we already got that there you go but i'm not enforcing just yet i'm waiting for my uh, disaster to trigger i need to get the disaster enacted before i get the union with the french otherwise what's gonna happen is if i have the union with the french and i get the uh war of the roses disaster i lose the union with the french because my leader dies and i don't have above zero relations with them and then this whole war was absolutely pointless that's why we're gonna have a little bit of fun extend this war a little bit more and we're gonna wait for that war to trigger or better yet the um, disaster to trigger i'm also a little bit of a dumb dumb i was expecting it to trigger by now but i forgot that i had mary as my heir i should have disinherited her a while back i completely forgot not gonna lie i just forgot it is what it is i'm human as well right and the war of the roses has just triggered we're gonna go for the guy that gives us the most mana points which i believe is this guy arthur the first and we got some rebels in york that means we can enforce our peace deal now with the french so let's go ahead and uh, go for the union with france as well as we'll get as much money as we possibly can from them maybe cancel a couple of cores as well no no they don't want to cancel cores How about one core one core is enough for you and then we get 588 ducats yeah sure that's fine let's go for that boom shakalaka now we have uh, <laughs> a lot of problems because this offered us uh, a huge amount of nations in a potential coalition they will join the coalition but we have a lot of strong allies basically all of iberia and austria so i'm fairly confident that it's not going to trigger but it will form so let's get rid of our uh, pretender rebels here and uh, stabilize our country first and foremost we also can do this particular parliament issue french english reconciliation act lickius maximus and then we gotta bribe some people to make this happen of course the good old english way i'm not sure if this is the english way to be fair this sounds more like the romanian way to me but hey it is what it is oh no i forgot no oh that's a big boo-boo right there i should have gone one one stability and i would have gotten the third one from here i wouldn't have i i literally just wasted 100 admin points uh, it is what it is mistakes were made man it is just you know I'm human, okay? I'm human. Learn from my mistakes and don't make the same ones, all right? Now, the thing is, we got to get the uh, French above zero relations with us because whenever our leader dies, if they have below zero relations, we will lose the union and then this whole war and all of this amazing uh, aggressive expansion was pointless as consequence. We can also do the uh, seize the French uh, throne mission that offers us a little bit of a uh, manpower recovery and so on. And now we have a few more missions here. One of them, shatter the French nobility, is going to be of mass of help but it means that we got to get the french under 30 percent liberty desire so that's going to take a while it's not going to be quick that's for sure we can also declare calais the staple port getting 10 mercantilism and we can uh declare the statute under strain of appeals we're not going to do that because that's going to lower our relations with the french however we will be buying indulgence with the pope because i'm pretty sure he's going to excommunicate me he's got a lot of uh, beef with me upset the pope minus 91 alone relations which is pretty bad let's face it i'm sorry what the fuck just happened burgundy declared war on france burgundian conquest of bourbon what how the f are the french i mean the burgundians so freaking brave like what okay well you know what we have allies my friend we got allies and our allies are gonna freaking schnapple dupe you I'm gonna call in my allies because i'm not gonna bother with this war i'm gonna let them take care of it whilst i take care of uh take care of my rebels in in mainland england really the island of england not mainland all right boys let's assign this leader and attack yes maximus burgundy got mercenaries from berg no Nobody cares. Here you go. Let's take care of them. Hopefully that's going to end the civil war. It did not end. The pretender escaped. Well, that means we're going to get another rebellion pop out soon. Let's see where it is this time. And he seems to have appeared in Shrewsbury. What a weird name. Shrewsbury. Are people there very shrewd? Is that why it's called Shrewsbury? Oh, come on, nobles. You're just saying this because you want my money, don't you? And I think that was it. That was actually pretty fast. We gain one stability. End of the war of the road and we get to have either a lot of rebellions or we can get this guy henry tudor as our heir 342 he's not too bad he's actually average that means we get went up to three stability okay that is pretty freaking good now we can also get another minus five percent crownlands which means we went up to 20 percent crownlands we're getting no autonomy debuff and we have the plus one mana privilege as well as we got rid of the other horrible privilege that we started with so overall is definitely going on the right path now we can also uh, take care of the burgundians if my allies here didn't do 
it yet. Oh, 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 I should have seen this before. If I got this mission done, if I navigated the War of the Roses, I would have gotten significantly less aggressive expansion in the French War. There you go. Another thing you guys need to remember that I completely forgot about. <laughs> Alude, you know me, Max. How dare you have fun in your game? This is not how you play EFR. I'm making a Reddit to complain about you now. Right now, I'm doing it, Ludi. You know what I'm going to do in that case? I'm going to convert all the Welsh people to English, all right? There you go. I'm converting them. Are you happy now? This is all your fault. I would not have done this, but you pissed me off. So now I'm going to convert. They're all going to be English. Even the freaking Isle of Man. They're going to be English. There's going to be no separatists and no freaking dissidents in my country. Right? There's only English people here, okay? You happy about it? I hope you are. This is your fault. When someone's going to ask you in the future, where did all the Welsh people go? Oh, I saw... It's my fault because Ludi was not playing meta, so I got upset, so he converted all the Welsh people. It makes sense. You shut up. Don't you judge me, all right? Oh, hey, on the bright side, Bretons are at war with me because of uh, the um, Burgundian, so I can do a white piece with them, I guess. Obviously, I'm going to be uh, prioritizing the French pretender rebels. If these guys enforce their demands, I lose the union with the French, so uh, <laughs> that's something I'm not really looking forward to. All right, let's get our piece here. I don't think I... Uh, I'm not going to take any provinces because, realistically, if I do take provinces, it's aggressive expansion I don't really need. I'm going to go for the war reps and the uh, trade power as well as the money. I'm not going to get too much of it because my allies have done most of the work, but it's A-OK. -okay. At least we managed to get them out of the coalition against us, so now the coalition is... Wait, what? Castile broke their alliance with us. What? Castile, why would you rival me? We're like best friends, bro. This is actually horrible. And they're going to get the union with the Aragonese soon because they are they have an heir female and they have a male heir. So whenever those two become of age and they take over, they will uh, get the union. Well, in that case, the gloves are off. Let's, uh, let's go back to the British lands here. Unify Scotland and Ireland and afterwards we're going to have to get ready for a couple of invasions into the south, if you know what I mean here. Surprised that the Papal States is available as a rival. What the F, man? The thing that upsets me the most, though, is the fact that I was curring favors with the Castilians because I was going to use them in a few devious plots that I had planned, you know, but now it's it's over. It's down the drain, all those curry favors wasted, man, I'm telling you. All right, let's hire the Grand Company. That's going to bring us up to uh, max force limit again, and that means we can get the, um, oh, oh, again, relations debuff with the French. Oof. As I was saying, we're going to get the Raisin Army CB against the Scots and the uh, various Irish minor nations here. We're going to use that to the fullest extent of our might. There you go. We can bring in most of Ireland, actually, in this same war. Alrighty. Well, if that's the case, I guess this is just a massive gloves off sort of situation, isn't it? Maybe I should, in that case, uh, attack the Irish first and then attack the uh, Scots afterwards. Yeah, that might be the best option here. Okay, most of the wars against the Irish are done. I'm actually getting ready now for the war with the Scots. So the way that this is going to go is I'm going to go for the subjugation CB against Scotland. I'm going to be co these bad boys here and it seems like Sligo's what oh right okay Sligo's already at war with me never mind I just realized actually I'm gonna wait for this uh, siege to finish too so I can use the main army against the Scottish army in uh, Ulster if only this freaking fort would actually fall it's been a while now it's 500 freaking days it was on like 20 something percent for a really ridiculously long time as well all right boys there was Voltius as they say in uh, Scotland that's totally a Scottish word trust me and I think I should start actually piecing out nations here let's go ahead with uh, uh, say these bad boys. I'm actually gonna peace out from the war leader. There you go. So I don't actually have to pay any more diplo points for this. Nice. Coalition wise, Brittany, Burgundy, Lorraine, Liege. Absolutely don't give a schnapps about any of those countries. So not gonna pretend that I do. Oh, look, the Irish people are angry that we're annexing the Irish people. If only there was another way, but there isn't. You know why? Because I don't give a schnapps. Okay, Ireland is English. Everybody knows this is this common knowledge. Please, members of IRA, don't kill me. I love you guys. It's just a video game. I'm joking. Pretty funny how no matter what, Ireland's always going to be divided. Like, we got all of the Irish lands, but the northern bit here belongs to Scotland. And now, I'm not saying that I'm going to let the Scots keep this for the meme effect, but, but I'm going to let the Scots keep this. <laughs> All jokes aside, because we uh, we do need to have Northern Ireland for ourselves, we're going to go for the uh, vassalization and we're going to directly take Ulster from uh, the uh, Scots. Trust me on this, it makes a lot more sense in a few moments. You'll see what I'm talking about soon. There's going to be a lot of nations in a coalition, but it is what it is. Not much I can do about it, sadly. Let's bring our boys back as well now, since uh, we need to wait for the truce to expire with the Isles before we can attack them. But on the bright side, we are basically all of the British Isles and most of the French regions 
region by 1460 and that is just insanely powerful now we can do conquest of ireland it gives us 75 admin points and we get the crown of ireland parliament issue meaning we can go over here and we can hover over it it's going to create a kingdom of ireland that's going to be in a pu under us that's why i did not core up any of these provinces so i'm also going to be concentrating though so it's easier for me to um integrate the kingdom of ireland later and because concentrating means i get more dev in london so i'm happy with that we can also get admin tech uh, five apparently all right we can do that and let's go to our parliament oh actually did i not click the button i did not let's go click yes maximus and minus one government reform sure military support sure delegation to the holy see okay admin support burgers and now we have two options here ireland should remain under our direct control meaning we get admin and military power as well as we get for 25 years unrest dev cost reduction and autonomy change or we make them a subject release the whole of ireland as a uh, junior member and we get until the end of the game the crown of ireland that gives us one extra diplo relations unjustified demands minus 10 percent and prestige 0 0.50 of course that is the best one to go for because that is a permanent modifier that we're getting so even after we've integrated ireland we're still gonna get the diplo relations plus one Mwah, amazing i love this new mission tree problem is with the subjugation of scotland we need to get these two islands in order to get the orkney events to purchase orkney and uh the other one pharaoh so uh it's a matter of weightiness in any case we do have all of this that will potentially join in a coalition so realistically for the next 10 12 years we're gonna chill fix our country and have a really strong army as well as uh, navigate the mission so we can integrate the french realms i've got a lot of extra military points so i am gonna go for a military idea first i'm going for aristocratic obviously since it's a good balance of both economic playing toll and military ideas within uh, aristocratic ideas itself one thing you should know is that with the 1.35 patch you don't need to have vassals in order to give out the strong duchies you have to have subjects so as you can see i only have one vassal and two personal unions and i was still able to give out the uh, strong duchies which offers the liberty desire reduction as well as the extra diplo relations this is actually a really good feature i was hoping that they were going to add it and i'm glad to see that they did add it in 1.35 so uh i just realized after a few years that um that was a defensive war it would have been a lot less aggressive expansion for me to take lands from burgundy but hey it wasn't meant to be we do have still a lot of aggressive expansion but we are improving relations with the nation in the coalition and that means that eventually they will start leaving look at that 45 aggressive expansion 38 that means if i reload the game right now those nations will be out of the coalition not gonna reload it just yet though because i want to do a quick cheeky war against burgundy since our truce just expired here i want to uh not let them join the coalition and second off i want to get the nations that already are in a coalition i e Brittany and so on out of that coalition so then when the truce is over with them in five years i can uh, attack them again since i want to make Brittany a vassal also plus weakening the coalition by having a war with members of the coalition means that the rest will dissolve so let's call on the austrians give them 10 favors might as well it was fairly easy to wipe out the Brittany's army i should have enough war score to piece them out now let's see like i said only white piece 54 58 that means i just need to take one more province here or occupy one more province i'm a man of my word 63 50 57. I'm not gonna take any money. Let's just go with the white piece. So when this truce is over in 71, I will be making them my vassal because they will be out of the coalition since they now have a truce with me. You know, I disagree with the name pick RD. I mean, why do I always have to pick RD, right? I want to pick somebody else, okay? Now I know what you're thinking, Ludi. This is an all times new bad joke and you might be right about that. And I'm basically applying the same tactics I applied to the French war. I'm wiping out the smaller stacks whenever I see them. If they don't merge their stacks and i just wipe out their pu members and their vassal stacks then eventually the burgundian army is going to be very easy to deal with as it just literally became for me right now pretty sure in uh, heidelberg they only make uh, heidelbergers yo i honestly thought that the emperor is supposed to be protecting its hre members but no the emperor is just like yo give me constance ludi i need to get my fingers on constance right now i mean who is even going to hold the emperor accountable end of the day they're the ones that are supposed to hold themselves accountable right the big d is here boys and d of course stands for question and the big question is what the hell am i gonna do with this <laughs> i don't want to take any of their lands because i'm fairly certain that when the uh, burgundian inheritance happens i'm gonna get some of this stuff it's not much aggressive expansion as you can imagine because it's just one province i'm getting from them also this is a fairly decent province uh since it's 17 development then it produces grain which eventually means i'm gonna build a soldier's household here to get more manpower the time has arrived for me to just uh, chill 
and wait for the truce with Britney to expire in a couple of years. Because check it out boys, I've been improving relations with everybody and most of these nations have left the coalition by now. That being said, if I do just reload the game, they will be leaving because the AI reassesses its situation when you reload the game. Whilst we are waiting for that truce to go down, we can use some money from here. So we're going to sell titles and seize crownlands after and the money that we got, we can invest in our country, build a few workshops around. Look at that, London's giving 0.3 ducats alone from having a workshop. And this just scales the more production development we have in these provinces. I've also killed off my second heir because once my leader dies, there is a chance I'll get a Habsburg on my throne. And check it out, boys. The Castilians also just got a Habsburg and they have an heir that's an Habsburg as well. So if I do get the Habsburgs on my throne, I'll be able to get a PU over half of Europe if, say, RNG goes badly for some reason and I don't get it through my missions. And I tested it out, reloaded the game and check it out. Everybody is leaving the coalition against us because they have just uh, recalculated their particular uh, relations towards us. That happens a lot of the times. So if there's not enough support within the coalition against us, everybody is going to leave and it's going to dissipate the coalition. Another day, another war war with the Bretonians. This time it's going to be the final war with the Bretonians because I'm going to be fully annexing or vassalizing them. Depends on the AE, I guess. How much would this be? 61 AE to vassalize, so actually not much of a coalition at all. Or 51 AE because it doesn't include the Bretons themselves because they don't exist anymore, but it is going to be a little bit bigger of a coalition. So I'm not sure because honestly, 413 admin to core it up is quite a little bit, but at the same time, getting these provinces directly is going to make my life a lot easier since I don't have a thousand different vassals around since I'm going to make the uh, Iberian nations uh, subjects and I went for aristocratic ideas meaning I'm looking for a fight rather than diplo ideas and I've decided guys I'm going to um, <laughs> fully annex them. I don't give a schnapps about the coalition okay? It's about time you guys start a brand new coalition. You just left the previous one. What is even wrong with your people? You know I'm dangerous you gotta stop me here. There you go. It's not too much uh, admin points. 350. It's a piece of cake boys. It's all good guys. Don't we already have hex six for both admin and mill. We're actually a little bit behind with our diplo points, so um, I might promote this guy as consequence. Time for a new uh, diet, boys, and this time we're gonna be curtailing French nobility. It's a special one because the moment that we manage to pass this, we'll be able to do the mission Shatter French Nobility that offers our leader more mana points and it leads down to the Angevin Kingdom. Afterwards, we just need to get the Burgundian bits and what's left of Burgundy that we recently uh, liberated. This could have been done a little bit faster to be fair, but I'm just taking my sweet time here as well Let's go with a little bit of military support obviously admin support to sides in parliament Don't care about the holy sea either for that matter and there you go We lost one stability. We got some uh, rebelski, but it's worth it because now look boys a shatter the nobility And we gained 20 loyalty for the nobility as well nice plus we gained um, we gained those uh, juicy mana points here We have had another air in the meanwhile, so I'm gonna probably stay with Charles Lancaster and gonna try and go for the Habsburg afterwards maybe because this guy's already 55 so I'm not sure how long he's still gonna be around I guess another day another siege and as consequence another mission to be done transfer this to the Scouts and Tachius Maximus Obligatius boom shaka Loki let's go though our mission now subjugate Scutland and we can also do unify the Isles that offers us a little bit of uh, prestige and a few other things here the act of union is gonna be done once we form the Angel Kingdom, so we gotta do the Angevin Kingdom mission first in order to do that, obviously. I was kind of hopeful that the Burgundian inheritance is gonna trigger, that's why I didn't take Burgundy's lands in the two wars I had with them. But yeah, I mean, uh, it, it seems like they're making me wait for it, essentially. Now, you guys probably know that I am a very patient man if you watch my videos, but I'm not patient enough to wait for these guys here, so I'm just gonna attack them. I'm just gonna take a little bit out of Burgundy. I'm not eating the whole thing, you know what I mean? Just a smudge I'm taking, that's it. Because the, the this guy, look at him. He He's 46, he's still not yet. How can you not die at 46, man? I just don't get this game sometimes. So here's the thing, right? I really want to make Burgundy lose their holdings in the north so that I can attack the holdings in the north uh, after I finish with the Burgundians. So for now, I'm just doing this. One more war, I can take all of these provinces in the next war, meaning that I can uh, I can do that mission. I got the northern bits, I just need these bits. And when it comes to these guys, I'm gonna ask my PU over here to get some claims on them. So I'm setting my vital interest in the Provencian lands, which means France is gonna get the claims and I can attack them whenever they do get those claims. I love this privilege, man. Temples and cathedrals give extra tax and unrest is a huge deal, especially if you're gonna be expanding a lot. It kind of makes it worth it to build the churches in that case. Just 
just for the unreds really albeit the tax does scale with their other reforms and uh, modifiers that give even more tax in provinces with the uh, temples and cathedrals seem to have gotten ourselves excommunicado so i'm gonna take the uh, burger loans again so i can pay for indulgence and uh, as such get rid of the excommunicado there you go we lost it after one month now we can also use the extra money to uh, build more buildings starting with more production buildings and maybe some marketplaces this is not bad as well gonna skip on the churches for the time being the unrest and everything is pretty good but you know workshops means actual way more money so oh man this is a really good event here boys the justice of peace offers us either 50 admin points or until the end of the game stab cost reduction state maintenance reduction and one innovativeness for just 300 ducats it's a hundred percent worth it lads so always go for this obviously i've got a temporary alliance with savoy because i'm going to be attacking the pope here and i'm going to be taking back the uh french lands that the pope has after i'll cancel the alliance with savoy because i need two of their provinces as well i just got that simply so i don't need to get too much aggressive expansion with these guys and as such they would join a coalition against me also what the hell happened here luca is in albenga and their capital is in corsica and the old luca province is owned by Flor. what the f happened here man <laughs> i got so many questions right now oh that's pretty much the last province that the uh pope has so let's see we can go 120 310 yeah we got everything we want to be fair i don't think i need anything else from them just the three provinces that should be a-okay with me oh damn we even have a event for king henry the eighth who is an average boy oh 555 sure we'll go for this he's not too bad and i also got a mission to subjugate provence i'm gonna do it even though i have to fight against the austrians it's fine it was about time that the gloves came off you know when the in the whole austria situation here they're not really my friend i've been playing them along this whole time oh i can call in poland to this uh sure they can deal with austrians i guess then these pitiful austrians will not be able to stand in the might of the armies of murder wait no no i'm the good guy uh, the armies of isengard hey man that's about as good as the british armies were right don't judge it come on end of the day we still want to be good friends with the austrians just so maybe we might get that alliance back later down the line when it comes to uh, Provence, as expected, we're making them our vassal, canceling the cores they have on us, and all the other juicy stuff here. So, uh, now, it's just six more provinces away for what we need to do we can do this mission right secure the duke's crowns which means we now have 15 trust towards us from the french and vice versa as well as some trade power and other goodies around here and hey look at that we can get the alliance back with the austrians so uh i did a good job in not releasing half of their country didn't i all right boys time for the big war we've been sitting around doing nothing for far too long i mean it's honestly been like two months or something <laughs> oh i love the smell of coalitions in the morning boys <laughs> There you go. We also managed to get core creation cost reduction, unrest, and so on. Meaning it's going to be significantly cheaper for me to core this up now. Actually going to even do this and this, making it even more cheaper. And what is this? We got another mission done? What is the other mission? Oh, the Angevin culture. Oh, damn. Okay. So that means the British culture group gets converted to the Anglois culture of the French culture group. Oh, my schnitzeldorf. We are one big schfappy family, boys. Look at that. We are the same people united at last oh we even uh converted the scots as well into anglo i guess we're also going to be doing a quick incursion into the uh savoyard lands because we need these two provinces too in order to get the angevin empire restored or better yet formed plus getting this truce with savoy means that they're not going to join the coalition which has not yet started forming but i assume will start forming at some point in the nearby future now we've reached a point where having mercenaries is not really that uh, viable since they're way more expensive than regular troops which means i'm going to have another third regular infantry stack and we're gonna mix in the uh, marines that we already recruited a few of since we got the tier 5 military doctrine that allows us to get marines and makes it 20% cheaper to recruit these marines as in it costs 20% less sailors finally Charles died at the ripe age of 60 freaking 9 dude what are the freaking odds I could have had a nice game say yo we got all of Western Europe by 1464 but no the bastard had to live forever man anyway flanders i'm coming for your ass now <laughs> oh looks like the emperor made uh made flanders release stuff from burgundy so i'm gonna be taking that right now thank you very much imperator now as they say in france a few years later we've cleaned up what was left to clean of the french region and we have the mission angevin kingdom this is what's gonna give us the act of union parliament uh, issue so let's go ahead and click yes maximus we've also got permanent claims on an entirety of uh province 
provinces around us. Let's check the map mode here. There you go. Most of Aragon and uh, the Basque lands, most of North Italy, as well as the southern bits of the Netherlands, I guess. Once we secure those three regions, we'll be able to continue down our mission path here and we will be able to establish our own Schnitzeldorfs in those regions, leading down the line to the domination of Europe that gives us the admin plus 5%. Now I need to wait for a couple more years as well to uh, be able to form the Angevin Kingdom, so once more, Scipius Maximus. Oh man, I wish this uh, actually gave me admin points, that would uh, make my skipping a little bit faster. But hey, there you go, we got admin tech 10, as well as we got a lot of innovativeness, so we now have 58 innovativeness, meaning we get 5.8% cheaper. All sorts of mana interactions in the game. You also can get our third idea set. I'm actually not sure what to go for here. Honestly, I think diplomatic would be best in my particular situation, but I don't mind going exploration or trade, simply so that if I go exploration, I can have both an awesome European empire, but I also have a colonial empire to filter in all of that colonial trade into the old world, essentially. There you go, we can also start the act of union issue in the parliament. The issue has the following effects, inherit France, as long as they have less than 25 provinces, and we change to the Angevin Kingdom. Let's go ahead and check our parliament issue here. Let's give out uh, diplomatic support, sure. Minus 143 sailors, one admin point. Okay, this is actually taking a little bit out of us, but it's fine. There you go, boys. Get the new traditions and ambitions, so we now are the Angevin Kingdom, and we've inherited France, and we are absolutely beautiful. I actually really adore the way that this looks on the map. It's just insane. We also can uh, power up to an empire rank, meaning all of the French culture provinces are as our primary culture. The new ideas are manpower plus 20%, uh, years of separatism minus 5 improved relations, core creation cost minus 20% is absolutely masterful, national tax and number of parliament issues plus 1, discipline, chance of new air, and years of integrating personal unions minus 10 is huge, infantry combat ability, governing capacity costs, as well as legitimacy, plus now we can get the act of union enacted, meaning that we get 20 base production distributed randomly around provinces in the British Isles and France, <laughs> so we just gain 20 production for simply clicking a button. Let's also make sure that we make all of these our full state so we actually fully benefit from everything that these provinces have to offer. It did mean that we went over our governing capacity apparently by a little bit. Let's check. We're at 857 out of 825. Not a big deal. We can just build a few courthouses here and there and that's going to get rid of the extra governing capacity issues. Also, by going exploration, check out the uh, extra policies we have. We got 20% manpower from uh, aristocratic exploration and colonial development boost from infrastructure exploration. So I like this idea combination because with infrastructure we are able to play toll, with aristocratic we're able to kick everybody's ass around us, and mix in exploration we can go colonial, as well as the policies double down on us going colonial and kicking everybody's ass around us. Oh and you know what else guys, I think I'm gonna disinherit this guy so I can get Henry Lancaster since he is a 555 leader, he's an absolute chat boy. And check it out guys, we're getting 1.1 prestige per year despite being at 100 prestige already because of all these amazing modifiers that the Angevin Kingdom gets. Essentially, you can never need to worry about prestige. You're always going to get that aggressive expansion impact reduction, that morale of armies and navies, trade power bonus, and everything else that comes alongside it. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, choose Mr. Henry. And I know what you're thinking. Ludi, will you be accepting of the natives when you go in the new world? Of course I will be, guys. That's why we're enacting the best colonial policy available when dealing with the natives. We're so going to be super friendly as long as they're there. If they don't exist there, how can we be friendly with them, right? I mean, we gotta be logical about these things, right? Leave that like so we can get going on to the new world as well as conquer what's left of Europe. And hey, if you enjoyed the content, subscribe and check out this awesome Ottoman video until the next time. And I wanna give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.